Hi there, it's Matt and Tom here from MFTV and this week we have got our review of the Bahrain Grand Prix from last weekend and also the preview ahead to Saudi Arabia. And what a cracker we have for you tonight. Um, <laughs> Hopefully it'll be better than what the actual race was, I think I fell asleep at one stage. The race wasn't as good as we hoped or thought, but uh, 24, 48 hours after the race there's been some interesting sort of story shall we say so uh yeah, i think we'll, even though the racing hasn't been grand that great i think someone set a ticking time bomb in the f1 paddock and just gone boom let's just blow everything up so yeah um but we'll go through obviously the the race of the weekend and then we'll cover the different topics and we'll also look ahead to saudi and see what that holds and yeah i'm sure you'll probably see loads of news over the course of the next few days ahead of practice um yeah so was there anything you want to add first of all tom no, it's just been it's been interesting. So uh, we'll start off with the race and what our thoughts were, or the whole weekend, shall we say? I think we can sum it up in one action. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it wasn't a classic. I mean, in the end, we gave a race rating for the uh, for the race itself, four out of ten, um, because when you've been having a bit of a drought and waiting all the pre-season, and then you hope for everyone to come back with a bang, and it just ends up being a bit of a snooze fest with hardly any overtaking at all. Um, I don't know, it's a bit pants, isn't it? Yeah, I think what I was looking forward to most of all was the new rule that they've brought in with the DRS that can be used from lap one. Um, it didn't work. But I, thought, <laughs> I thought it might might work out that um, the leader might be caught and uh, after a couple of corners, he was over a second ahead. So. It made me laugh, Martin Brundle as well at the start. He was like, it could be really good because if we get a safety car or, you know, everyone's had all of the off-season off and we get the race going, we'll see if everyone behaves. And there was nothing. Apart from Hulkenberg hitting Stroll, that was it. Yeah, he got a bit carried away and excited, I think, because the position he managed to put the Haas in. But, um, Much stronger performance from Haas, though, it has to be saying. Yeah, yeah, they were good. Um, they've, they've probably been one of the, the biggest improvements, shall we say so far that, that i've seen yeah just a shame he stacked it really unfortunately as soon as he got in at the first turn um but yeah so as i say he gave the race rating four out of ten because it's just really you know for the start of the season we were hoping for a lot more better and there's certainly been a lot of hype over ferrari and mercedes going into the season and kind of didn't live up to the hype it just the race result ended up what you expected really two by two by two with the red bulls and the ferraris and the mercedes and the aston martins and the mclarens um so Let's hope Saudi might be a bit of a better one. At least might have a few more little prangs and accidents with the walls, hopefully. It does seem as well that a car with a Mercedes power engine unit in it uh, seems to be having issues with overheating. And it Which could be cold. a worry in Bahrain. It was cold, It was cold. <laughs> but, uh, you saw on um, Alex's uh, steering wheel that um, it said car too hot. And they're obviously powered by Mercedes. So... Um, Got issues by the It's got it. issues, and it'll be interesting to see what Saudi brings. Mm. Yeah. It's going to be hot. It's going to be very hot, and there's not much room for breathing in the circuit because it's surrounded by the barriers. Although, I think again this year, I think like they did last year, they've moved some of the barriers further back a little bit just to try and make it a little bit more safer because everyone keeps saying about the corners being blind all the time. Frustrating, though, isn't it? Yeah, I just think they should just get on with it to be honest, stop looking for issues. Um, driver of the day, yeah, we nominated Sergio Perez for the race. Um, that was uh, Tom's decision because, in fairness, I agree with it. Max kind of really, what with pole and fastest up in the win, he wasn't really troubled at all. Whereas at least Sergio had to work for it. Um, so yeah, yeah, he done well to get out there. I was, I was hoping that we'd see a different style of racing this this year. With Red Bulls not going off as fast as and far as they were, but clearly they had sandbags in their car. They all got our hopes up and, for nothing, yeah, didn't they? Yeah. Story of my life, to be honest. But yeah. you know, it's just a bit of a shame, really. The fact, I mean, I think Martin Brundle summed it up at the end of the race when he turned around and said about last year they finished 12 seconds ahead, this year they finished 24 seconds ahead. So it's really concerning for the season ahead. The worrying part as well is Max finishing so far ahead of his teammate in the same car. So that's... At one stage, I think he went off for a coffee and okay. then come back. Well, he had a full pit stop in hand, didn't he? So mm. he could have... I don't know. It's going to be... Um, I just hope it improves as the season goes on. It needs to. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's got to. At the end of the day, I don't think it could get any worse. Um, we'll I see what happens. Uh, we don't want to be here every week saying that Max has won the race. 
Um, Ideally not. No, we want to <laughs> we want to have a mixture, and um, I really want Lewis to get a win. I really do. Be nice. I think the only comfort we can take from it, though, in fairness, is the fact of that at least the Ferraris are. Um, I think they're saying about three to four tenths of a second a lap down. So if they could bring some developments, and then allegedly McLaren are due to bring some updates, I think they said around about round four, round four, round five. Yeah. Um, so if the team start bringing some updates, then hopefully that will bring them a bit closer. But the problem is, it's a never-ending target. The more they bring, the more Red Bull bring. So, yeah. But on the Red Bull note. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where do we start? Um, obviously, it's it's been kicking off almightly over the weekend. I thought the funniest moment in Bahrain was when uh, Christian was sitting on the old pit wall and they came up and someone tapped him on the shoulder and pulled him off the pit wall to go and see the, pe- the text that had been leaked. <laughs> um, they're denying that they are true and that they're the real text, but we'll see. Um, and yeah, it's just been drama after drama, as you can see on our, on our timeline. All we've been doing is just posting just constant news. It's been great for us because we love the news. It's uh, a lot of people are saying as well that it's uh, Jos Verstappen that's leaked the text. Um, you want to see the argument that's going around on Twitter? Sky camera's got a good view of that inside the motorhome. Very pointy. Pointy and flappy hands. So, mm. um, yeah, I don't think this certainly isn't going to go away. And when Re- when Christian got cleared, I, I said to Matt, this isn't the end. No, no way is this the end. As the FIA and F1 turned around and said themselves, when you've got a Red Bull appointed barrister, that's cleared Red Bull and Christian Horner of any wrongdoing. It kind of says inside job a little bit. Um, so, yeah. The, the interesting thing is, though, is the president of the FIA has uh, come out and told Max to publicly back and support Christian. So that's um, that's an interesting one. I think the biggest thing out of it is when you think, really, Max has been absolutely silent. Hmm. I mean, I can't work out. Jos Verstappen did say um, that why would he go and shoot his son in the foot when he's winning everything and just mopping up with the red ball? But clearly, the, it isn't a happy camp. I, th- I think the accusations that Yoss sent the email out is wrong. If you ask me, I think they need to be looking either a little bit further up. My suspicion would be either on Helmut Marko or the new CEO, Oliver Minsler. You know, it just seems too close to home to be Yoss for stuff, and I don't see what he's gained from it. No, I don't. I don't really don't. All. And... Um... With, as you've seen my video today that, that we posted up, but um, uh, Yoss has been seeing chatting to Toto Wolf as well um, about a possible drive for Verstappen. And uh, Matt today had found out as well that uh, Max has a uh, exit clause in his contract. He does, apparently, yeah. yeah. It's looking like he's got a way out if Hamlet Marco leaves the team. It's so, a bit of a shock. And then we've got that, you know, we've got a big seat that's free for next season. So, um that's certainly an interesting one. I I could never picture it. Max going for Mercedes or in a Mercedes Oval, but after that Abby Dhabi finale, if you'd have ever said to me that Max Verstappen would have ended up in a Red Bull, I'd have laughed at you. Uh, in a Mercedes, sorry. Um, but you know, I think now is a possibility because if you'd have said to me Lewis would be in a Ferrari, well, yeah, it'd be, you know, <laughs> it just doesn't all make sense. Like everyone's just been turned upside down. Anything's possible now. Anything is possible. They do say that if the price is right, but. If it is true that they've found out that he has got the release clause in his contract and he can walk away if Helmut Marko leaves the team, then just maybe, just maybe. If it, it seems a bit odd that at that particular weekend with everything that's kicking off, Jos Verstappen was seen in plain sight. And apparently they had a working lunch, apparently, um, which is an interesting thing to say. But it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a seat that's in high demand. Mercedes want a good driver uh, to replace Lewis and... Um, if Max is available, of course they're going to be looking at him. So, because um, he is the best driver on the grid at the moment. Yeah, you said that through grinding teeth, then, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I don't think either one of us can claim to be the, the biggest Max Verstappen fans in the world. I just don't particularly like his attitude. But, you know, they do say that to be the best, you've got to be the most ruthless. And he certainly is that. And you can't knock him for winning what he's won. He's right. made the most of what he's got. Just look at what he's doing to Perez. Although his Perez being held back on purpose, that's another conspiracy there, isn't it? But especially from last season when he, Perez was that one point away in the championship. And then all of a sudden his car went downhill. Yeah. But Max just didn't. So, yeah, read between lines. Think, you know, everybody has their own opinion. But, yeah. 
but it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how it all goes. But obviously, the other bit of news that's come out this afternoon, although there hasn't been anything official, is, is that Ford are apparently looking at uh, an exit clause in their contract. I think Ford are getting very, very sick and tired. Obviously, the, the Ford Motorsport boss and then the overall CEO of Ford, they both spoke out and said that they want this cleared up. And I still don't think there's been a public response from Red Bull to Ford even now. No, and it doesn't look good for your brand name either. When you think of how big Ford is, to have this hanging over him, it's, it's not good. No, and that could be catastrophic for Red Bull if all of a sudden Ford decides, you know what, we're out, we're done. It's what we were saying last week. If Ford were going to pull out, they've got up to 2026 because they may have to pay a little bit of compensation to Red Bull. You know, other than that, there's there's nothing they've got to lose at the minute. So it's yeah. worrying for them. It is really worrying. They've got to make a decision. If Christian Horner isn't either confirmed, is cleared, and that's the end of the matter, or gone by the start of the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix, I think that's going to be another race, and eventually it's got to start affecting the team. It has, and what I can't work out is... If these leaked text messages are true, and they were definitely sent from Christian, how on earth did they clear him? Someone wasn't doing their job properly. No, definitely. And you, you can't say everything's fine, and, and clearly it's not. So, yes, there's got to be an investigation into what's gone wrong. And yeah. it's got to be sorted out, I would say, this week, really, before the race. It's got to be. I would 100% say so, because... You can't keep having everyone going on and on and on about it forever. You know, I mean, I know it's keeping F1 in the headlines, but it's for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. We want to be focusing on the racing, not on who's got what pictures of what. No. Right. Um, and then I suppose while we're on the old Red Bull thing as well, we take like a little sideways step to the other Red Bull team, the RBs. The RBs, yeah, and we're going to call them just the RBs. Yeah, we are going to call them just the <laughs> RBs because they can't be asked to say the long one every single week. Um, but I think a lot of people were scared in the beginning of the season, in pre-season, that this car was going to be a clone of the Red Bull. Yeah, thing. last year's car. But it hasn't worked out that way. Hasn't, no. No, I think they've just proved. I mean, yes, it's got the rear suspension, the front suspension, gearbox. It's got all the major components that you can buy as a customer team. But aerodynamically, it's pretty much still their own design. And it's been a, an evolution, it seems, from last season's Alpha Tauri. And the driver lineups, it's the same, but there's more tension. Oh, definitely a lot more tension. But I don't know if anyone see it on the cool down lap. Um, but obviously, Yuki was extremely peed off about the fact that he had to let Danny Rick through, didn't he? And uh, he got his own back on the cool down lap, and then Danny Rick reco um, retaliated. Yeah, so I can see going the season going on. They're both trying to prove themselves for, I believe it's next year, the seat's up, Perez's seat, potentially. Yeah, I mean, it's an open goal. Could, well, even if Perez stays at this stage, could there still be a Red Bull oh, seat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there could be two. <laughs> could be two, yeah. But obviously, as I said last week, I think Yuki Tsunoda will do a sideways step over to the Aston Martin team, especially if after what Fernando's been saying about he's not even sure he's going to even stay anymore. Um, he seems to now be steering more towards potentially calling it quits, mm. um, which would be another thing we can cover later on in the video. But... Yeah, it's uh, teammate tensions at Alpha Tower. Well, Alpha Tower, RB. You've got to get used to calling cool. their new name yeah. now. Bloody teams change more, <laughs> more names than I've changed my sweater. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know. But it, it's going to be a bit spicy this season. And obviously, with team, teammate wars, we also had the same issue with uh, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz as well. Yeah, and at the end of the day, Carlos has got a, uh, to prove a point to, again, another team out on the. The, the circuit to show that he is a good driver and he deserves to be in Formula 1 next season so he wants to prove a point he's got nothing to lose Ferrari can't well, he like, made that uh, clear to Charles yeah, didn't he yeah, <laughs> he's so, like get out of the way <laughs> um, so again it's, I think this this season we're going to see a lot of teammate battles and I think tensions will put, is going to boil over at, at some point times. I reckon it's got to boil over between Lewis and George as well because George will be wanting to put his foot down on that Mercedes team yeah, and even in the press conference at the beginning of, the, of last weekend, the media asked Lewis about how did he feel George be taking Lewis's place as a leader of the team, and Lewis wasn't confident. He wasn't. He didn't put. He didn't put George forward too well. I would have a bit of a worry about George Russell Lane, if I'm honest, and maybe that's why Mercedes are shopping around for Max Verstappen because 
last season when he was in the Singapore Grand Prix and he had a chance of at least second, maybe even challenging for that win. Yeah. He stacked it in the wall. Last lap. Yeah. And then this year, obviously in the Bahrain race, he was under pressure from Charles and I know he was under pressure for him, it was like 10 laps. Mm. But eventually he bottled it and ran wide and outbraked himself. Just seems to be just in that heat at the moment. He just hasn't got that little cutting edge where he can absorb the pressure. If that was Fernando, that would have been the widest F1 car in the world. You'd have never got past him. Yeah. Or he'd have just had you off one way or the other. <laughs> um, so definitely, I think we're going to be up for some spicy battles if round one have been anything to go by so far. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then, yeah, I suppose, should we cover Alpine next? Yeah, we can pick them up a little bit. <laughs> I think they need all the help they can get at the moment. Um I don't. I don't think it could have gone any worse for them. Obviously, they. We know the politics, and anyone that's watched Drive to Survive, we've got a review on season six as well on our channel. Um, obviously, last year they went and got rid of Otmar Zaffnauer and Alan Pomain. And it hasn't got a whole lot better. No, it's actually, it's got worse. It's got a hell of a lot yeah. worse. I mean, when they went into pre-season testing, and everyone was like, "Oh, could Alpine be the slowest team this year?" And we all thought it'd be Haas. Um, and then they ended up qualifying 19th and 20th. I just can't understand. The regulations haven't changed from last season. Uh, I can't understand how you can get it so wrong that you go backwards. I know they've taken this challenge of that they say is a whole brand new concept, but to have a brand new car which is overweight, underpowered, and aerodynamically is just a cack car. I, I think just, they said you know, the only thing that was from last season was the steering wheel. Pretty much, and obviously same drivers, so you can't say that lack of experience either. It's got exactly the same drivers, but obviously we said that I, you know, I did put in a video, I think it was earlier today or yesterday, after that performance, heads will roll, and lo and behold, today it's been announced and officially confirmed. There was already talk in the Bahrain paddock that their technical director Matt Harmon and their senior aerodynamicist Dirk Dick De Beer, Dirk De Beer, Dirk De Beer, yeah, um, something like that, Dutch fellow. Anyway, um, they've both resigned, uh, so they've begun gardening leave. So clearly, they haven't got that much uh, confidence in the concept. No. So it's just, I would worry. Me and Tom were talking about it earlier because we do talk about F1 even when we're supposed to be working, um, and I have a feeling that this year, Alpine goes. The part for sale. Yeah, like you said, keep the the Renault engine will probably remain, but Red Bull could need the Renault engine. Yes, they could. <laughs> they could. Um, Due to the FIA rules saying that obviously if there's a team that needs an engine and Ford do call it quits, there's no way they can stay with Honda. So Renault will have to stay, I think. But I do definitely think they could go up for sale. And Dre is a for sale sign up. Yeah, there we go. That's who I am. I do. I mean, anybody who see the uh, our review that I've got on our channel. The whole episode around Drive to Survive, the way they done it, that Otmar was pushed out, and then Bruno Famin came in, who I thought was quite a funny choice, being the fact that he's the manager of the Renault engine plant, and the Renault engines have been terrible for years. So that just all kind of seems to be like a perfect mix for me, of the, you know, and he was like, I've got to bring up the team around and get us all singing off the same hymn sheet, and that just doesn't seem to have worked. No. So it just gets worse, and I think uh, Ted Kravitz said in his notebooks, didn't he, that he did say, Alpine have got to go back 10 steps to potentially go forward another 10 later on. Yeah. yeah. So, definitely worrying times, and no wonder Esther and Offen and Pierre Gasly are trying to desperately get a different seat elsewhere. Yeah, and I think, again, them two drivers need to stick in Formula One, because I've, especially Gasly, I think he, he could be a future world champion if you put him in the right car. He's my preferred one out of the two of them. Yeah, Esther Van Offen, yeah. I think, is just a bit too hot headed. He yeah. has a tendency to clash with his teammates, and when you're trying to put him into a top team, I don't think that says Not champion. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, but um, yeah, bad to worse for Alpine. I do, I do feel sorry for him in a way, but sometimes I think you reap what you sow. Unfortunately. Um, going off subject slightly, but keeping on the steering wheel side of things, Williams' new steering wheel. The drivers are having trouble. Well, yeah, when it always pulling to the left all the time. No, no, no. The, the, this season they've adopted the steering wheel with the screen on because they've always had their screen external. Oh, okay. This they, is a real nerd out of anywhere, was it? And <laughs> um, they were talking about it in the Formula One, and Ted did bring it up as well is that the drivers can't get used to the buttons on the steering wheel. Oh, this is what the they're screen. on about the blue knob or something. That's it, and the, the screen is too bright for Albon. Oh, okay. 
Because I did hear Martin Randall saying about that, about yeah. he struggled that even in the Mon days. Yeah. So, so yeah. I thought I'd just add that in there. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we're all sleep easy, you know, <laughs> about Williams' hysteria all this year. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, obviously, although we could say Alex had um, a relatively decent race, because, again, Williams bought a new concept, I think a good runner-up for the disappointment of the race has got to be Logan Sargent. Yes. Just not good enough. Again. He proved it in testing when he went for a spin. And then in the race, I don't actually know what he done in the race, but he just didn't stop at the corner. Oh, I, I, just just kept, I just don't know what he done. Um, I have Williams made a mistake in retaining, retaining him? Definitely, 100%. Especially as I can't see what the advantage is of having him, because he's not as though he's big in, uh, a big influx of American sponsors there. No, but like they said, this season, first time in Formula 1 history where... Every team has kept their drive line up. Mm -hmm. And you've got no rookies on the grid this year. Everybody's had their first rookie season. Nick DeVries probably can't even be called a rookie now. He was never called a rookie, <laughs> apparently. But <laughs> And he got fired like he did by Alan Sugar. I, 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 I agree with giving somebody a chance. But I just think Logan Sargent, if he is a cat, he's used his ninth life, I think. I do definitely think that something's got to change there. I mean, how the hell, as I said to you today when we were talking about it, how do you go from finishing behind Kevin, uh, no, Nico Hulkenberg, even though he had to pit for a new nose, yeah. and Valtteri Bottas after he had a 56-second pit stop, and you're still behind them? I mean, come on, seriously. I mean, the car's clearly got something about it. Mm. It may not have been the best weekend, because they were all suffering, as you said earlier, with the overheating, but... Seriously, I mean, it's like, it's either sharpen up or get out now, I think, to be honest. I think he's probably got till the summer break to sort himself out. Myself, personally, when's Miami this season? Usually pretty early on, isn't yeah, it, Miami? Yeah. I think he'll get till Miami, maybe, because I'm sure, isn't that his home race, Miami? One of the American well, ones the American is his first is, race. Yeah. So I've got a feeling, I reckon, that they might get to the first American race so they don't get no backlash. And then that might be it, pal. Which we'll see who then gets called up. Yeah. And we'll see who gets that C. But there's something's got to be happened because Albon can't keep carrying the team. No. No, I think as well, Williams are, they're looking a good team. The car's looking good. If they get it right, if they get it right, it's quite erratic. It seems to be quite skittish and got a lot of work to be done on it. But again, it's another team that's. Kind but of, they're not as bad as the start of last season. No, definitely Their not. Their test improved okay. But yeah, I think... But now with, with Haas looking like they're coming up as well. Yeah, Haas definitely look like they're more improved this season. I mean, everyone was all quite doom and gloom about Haas. I thought they were, because I didn't think... I didn't think they were going to be ready. I did I did think to myself at the end of the day, because we were having this conversation the other day, about the, the new way of F1 now is, is that... Rather than having your team principal now, it's more technical led. So obviously you've got James Vowles who's taken over at Williams. You've got um, uh, the what's his name, Andrea Stella, who now runs McLaren, and you've got Mike Crack who runs Aston Martin. So it all seems very engineer led now. Lauren Mackies is now in charge of um, RB, who's moved over from Ferrari. So rather than having like a, just a one man team principal, it does seem to be now that the F1 teams are very engineer led. Maybe Ayu Kamatsu is the man to sort it out. Yeah. Because they definitely, I mean, they, they went all about their test very, very quietly, just doing constant race run after race run after race run. And a lot of people were worried about that their car was, because the B spec last year was so late, that they just didn't have the budget or the time to go and develop another new car for this season. But the B spec was awful. It was, but hopefully that's given them the basis to make a better car this year because they know it seems that it seems to have like fallen off the cliff like they did last year in every race, which is better, I think. Yeah, and, and it proved it in qualifying as well with Hulkenberg going up there. In, I know he stacked it at Again. the beginning, <laughs> but it just proves there is pace in that car and you could get to Q3. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've always had the qualifying pace, it's just in the race they couldn't make it work. The only thing, yet again, I think this proves, though, if, if by the middle of this season, if Hulkenberg is still smashing Magnussen, then I think Oliver Berman will be taking his seat. Yeah. Although, apparently, uh, Nico Hulkenberg is shopping himself around. 
Well, like we said, there could be plenty of seats up for grabs. So. Yeah, lucky if you don't know Alpine. You definitely won't be going to Alpine, I don't think, because that's frying pan into the fire, I yeah. think. But um, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, I'd, I'd like Gene Haas to finally get that thing going. I don't know what the hell he was doing when he was taking pictures of everything. Did you see that in the pit lane? Who, Gene? Yeah. No, I didn't see he that. Was in the, he was in the garage and he was taking pictures of all the wings and stuff like that. And I thought, well, no, you knew what you are doing. And he used to be used to NASCAR, just pulling left all the time. Maybe it's just a memento, just in case they break, which one did. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what it looked like before it got crashed into. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe their R and D budget is so low now they're taking iPhone pictures to just do the developments. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, there's a lot to be improved by a lot of the teams. I think. Yes. Certainly, I don't think anyone will be bringing many upgrades for Saudi because <clears> of <throat> the crash risk. The crash risk and so close to Bahrain, it's just. Uh... Mm. Don't know. I'm op I want to be optimistic for the weekend. You can try. But seeing how Red Bull were, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Who's your bet on for the weekend this weekend? It's going to be a Red Bull. <laughs> it's going to be a Red Bull, isn't it's it? It's going to be Red Bull. But it's going to be. I don't know. I just want. I a little part of me wants to see Ferrari do well. Different type of track. It's more high speed corners than anything. So it's it, that, you know, we'll see how well Ferrari got their car this year. But I don't know. I just, if the heat has any kind of impact on anything, it might be the Red Bull because of their new tornado style side pods with their cooling package. I can't see Mercedes doing great because they don't do very well at street circuits. And the problem you're getting now mm. is there's more and more street circuits coming onto the calendar. There is, yeah. And yeah. they've never been a street circuit car. Their cars have been set up for what I call as the traditional race circuit. Um, you know, look at Hamilton, how well he's done around Hungary. Yeah. And that is what, that's an old school circuit. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think Mercedes this year got a good concept for what to start working from. Because at least, you know, I mean, as it proved with the whole drive to survive thing, Lewis was telling them all last season, you need to make changes. And he was basically told, shut up. They know what they're doing. Yeah, Which but he did wrong. come back and say, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Although anyone who hasn't seen that episode yet, obviously, spoiler, but that is the most cringe ad, um, episode I've ever seen. That was just cringy when yeah. they're all sitting there, all smiles and pleased. Oh, we've secured Lewis for the next two years. <laughs> Four months later. <laughs> He's gone and walked out on them. Yeah, it's going to be. I don't know. I hope they can keep their front wing. Who? Oh, Mercedes. Mercedes, yeah. Yeah, well, obviously, the, the FIA got it written in the uh, the rules, haven't they, about the fact that they can change it at a moment's notice. I think everyone's got their eye more on the fact of their trip front suspension. That's we what they're watching. the FIA can change rules at a moment's notice. Well, yes, being you say that, that's a good segue. <laughs> We're getting quite a pro at this now, Tom. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, this is breaking, breaking news. It literally just um, come up on my phone just as we were about to start recording this. But it seems to be that Bin Salayem of the FIA is now under investigation. Um, as it's been leaked that he tampered with the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix result last year. And the driver he tampered with was one who's well known for fixing races. <laughs> yeah, in a team that's bankrolled and sponsored by Saudi Arabian sponsors, Aramco. Coincidence, yes. anyone? Well, yeah. That just come to my head then as I was just thinking that. So, yeah, he apparently it's something to do with when there was the race restart or the race start and he got given a five second penalty, but they were still touching the car within the time they're not allowed to. So the rules state he should have got a 10 second penalty on top of that. And apparently he was on the phone to the director saying, waive the penalty. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Certainly, whoever it is who keeps trying to dish dirt, obviously, because they said that he was sexist or something last year, didn't they? Anti-women. Yeah. And then this. And then there's this Max Verstappen thing that's come out. Yeah, we say is, that. Yeah. Show loyal support to Horner in public. Don't think many people are showing loyal support. I mean, <laughs> poor old um, Christian Horner at the moment, don't know where to turn. Other than his wife, she seems to be standing by him. Toto Wolf and Zach Brown were definitely gunning for him over the weekend. No Toto Wolf must be loving this. Yeah. Well, he's probably been sitting there since what, two years ago, three years ago? If you've got a problem with your car, yeah. sort the bloody thing <laughs> out. And he's probably sitting there thinking, I'll have my day with you. And he's probably sitting there like, ha, 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 ha. 
Yeah. You're like Mr. Burns out of The Simpsons, excellent. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, oh, I don't know. I mean. But yeah, this whole, if it does come out that the race was fixed, then do they have any concert? I can't remember what the race result was, to be fair. So I don't know what consequence that would have had. They certainly the weren't up for the win, I don't think, no. was he? But obviously, being it was a, it's a Saudi sponsored and bankrolled team. And obviously, he is of Middle Eastern descent. Yeah, you know, again, you, you, a bit. you could have, it could have changed the drivers' championship, and it could have done the constructors' one as well. Yeah, yeah, well, especially if the Aston Martin fell away at the end of the season. But yeah, I don't know. It's just not a controversy that F1 needs to also be digging up as well. What was the whole Christian Horner thing? And then we still got the Felipe Massa thing where he's appealing the 2008 title now, isn't he? Yeah, it's, still right. You know, I mean, he's gone. desperately trying to push that one, which I don't think they can overrule the results because it's written in the regulations saying that at the end of the day, you, you can't overturn the championship once the drivers receive the trophy. I think he wants the money. But if they do change the result, then that opens the door for 2021. Yes. Yeah, so then that'd be another problem there, and this is the this is the issue, and I think this is why when they released the uh, the figures for Drive to Survive this week, and they said it was twenty three percent down, only two point nine million people watched it. I think that's all to do with the the Max Verstappen effect. And I think it's going to have it this season. They've already said that they've come out today, and fans are saying how boring the race was. Yeah, boring. Um, they're calling it, unfortunately. Five laps in, and yeah, twenty thirty seconds ahead. Mm. Um, yes, something's got to be done. Oh, I did think the DRS different. thing would have made a difference, but I think it just turned it worse. It just ended up being a DRS train from lap one, didn't it? That's that's it. It's um, I think we may have seen it different if a safety car had been deployed. A safety car, or it would have been a completely different race if Max Verstappen weren't in it. Well, yes. Because I think it would always be a closer race if uh, if Max isn't in the race. Because Sergio, whether it's the car, whether it's the team, whatever, whether it's the driver, he's not quite there as Max is. And then we might be having a, a you know a completely different F1. Because even Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz said over the radio, didn't they? We're racing Sergio here. Yeah. So it's kind of a bit disconcerting for the teams at this stage to know they're fighting for second and no more at the moment. And we'll race one in. We'll race one. People are, people, are, people are all saying, ready saying, Max has got the championship and it, it came across probably as arrogant from Red Bull, but during testing, when Max said the car feels better than last year and his uh, engineer come on the radio and said, you know what that means, and then all of a sudden we are the champions, got blurred out. So, um, yeah, not good, not good. No. The only the only thing that could stop their season in its in its rolling at the moment is if this Christian Horner stuff kicks off. If he leaves, it's then speculated that it's in the contract that um, Adrian Newey leaves. Jonathan Wheatley allegedly, I don't know if it's true, but obviously some of the talk out there is that he's demanding that if he doesn't get given the team principal role, he'll leave. And if Helmut Marco goes, because he could be the next one on the chopping block if it isn't him doing the pictures or the leaks. Um, then obviously then that apparently releases Max Verstappen from his contract. The whole thing could come tumbling down. I'm not overly keen on Mr Wheatley. Yeah, you're not, are you? No, no, so I hope he don't get the job. But um, Helmut Marco's already turned around and said that if it doesn't get sorted out soon, Red Bull are done. Mm. Yeah. How absolutely. many sponsors walk away? How if you know it just it's just a roll on effect throughout the team. No matter what Red Bull come out and say, the team as a whole, they're not. We've seen videos and images of the... They're not. It, it affects the team. Mm. Max has already come out and said Christian's dis uh, distracted, and he will be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Max is only going to be committed to that team whilst they're winning. I think he's that ruthless. I don't think it's going to come down to... And let's not forget as well that Max Verstappen could have drove for Mercedes all those years ago. It was Mercedes and Toto Wolff that let him go when they, he had the choice to go into Mercedes or Red Bull. And Red Bull acted quicker because they turned around and said, we'll put you straight in the um, Toro Rosso at the time. Yeah. Whereas Mercedes wanted to put him in Formula 2. And he was like, no, I'm not doing that. So that's why they missed out on him. So if there's a way that Toto Wolff could get revenge, I mean, how much of a massive nail in Red Bull's coffin would that be if their protégé goes and they've got no top-line driver to replace him with? Huge. And no engine. And no engine. <laughs> no management. 
it could just be one calamity after another for them. Yeah. But um, let's try and look on the positive side. Let's hope that it's going to be a decent race in Saudi. Let's hope there's no political rubbish this year, because obviously last year was a bit worrying when you see a torpedo hit an oil oil field, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you just see it in the background, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. So let's hopefully there's no, there's no, I mean, uh, there's uh, everyone's views on there about Saudi Arabia, sports washing everything. Uh, but let's just focus on the racing. I mean, all I will say is thank God there's been all this stuff so far in the first few weeks of the season, because if it was just down to a track action, we wouldn't have nothing to talk about. It would be a short video. It would be a very short video, because it would be, and Max got pole, and Max won, and that is it. Goodbye. <laughs> but instead, at least we've got something to talk about at the moment, until F1 kicks itself up the butt a bit. Yes. So, um, but I think you're right. I think it's probably going to be a safe bet for say Max to tap and win in Saudi. Yeah. But we could be sitting here this time next week saying, what a great race. I'm hopeful of it's a better race. Yeah. The track is more open to overtaking, especially that last corner. And that we have a different winner. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, let's have a good one. Loads of overtaking. Yeah. Because I don't think the overtaking has been necessarily the problem. No. It's just everyone seems to be too spread out this year. That's the only thing. I mean, it seems to be like very two by two by two. Yeah. There's not much of a mixture. Um, but... Fingers crossed, and then hopefully once we get through this weekend, the decisions made either way with everything else that's going on, and we can just focus on the racing for the rest of the season. That's what we want to be doing, although there's the news out there we need to be covering for all of you guys, because that's what we want to do. It would be nice just to be able to just focus on the racing and make videos on a cracking race and, you know, yeah, that's, picking that's people up. Do. But... Um... Horny Horner's keeping us busy. Hashtag Horny Horner. <laughs> we were so tempted to put that on our videos, but we thought we don't really want to go being sued at this early stage, <laughs> early stages of our channel. Um, but that is one thing I just want to just say thank you to everyone, because as, as you know, we're, I think we've been going a month now, um, and we are brand new at this. Hopefully you're seeing that we're getting more and more relaxed as time goes on, and our video content will get better. Um, and certainly the reaction over the past week has been even more of an increase. We're seeing it increasing week on week on week. Um, we really need you guys to subscribe to our channel and like our videos because then we know we're heading in the right direction. So just please carry on just watching our content. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it does mean a lot to us. And um, if there's anything you want to see, anything you want us to, to talk about more, let us know. And uh me and Matt are always up for change and we'll try and put Definitely. it in. Definitely. Well, we may try a different location at some point. You know, um, this is all very trial and error. Um, but we just hope you like our content. And we're just, the gist of this is we're just two mates. We love F1. Obviously, we cover the other sports as well. Um, and we just want to just talk about our passion, really, and see where this leads us. But we want your guys' input to help us improve. Yeah. and help us grow this channel. So. You noticed this week, Tom finally bought out a different jumper. It had been worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so, because we do do this around our full-time jobs as well, so this is really a baby and a pet project for us at the moment, and we really want to we really want to get it somewhere, and hopefully over the next few races, you'll see where we're going, because it'll be a bit different when we've got two-week gaps. This week's a bit different, because we've got just a one-week gap yeah. between the races. And it's been a passion of mine to do something like this for years. And I spoke to Matt about it uh, last, no, year before last. Mm -hmm. And we just never got round to doing anything. Just with me, I've got a young family. So the time with them as well and your family. But then Matt said this year, no, Tom, we're going to do it. And uh, it's working out good. It's, it's, it's going, going really well. It's getting there. We're, we're seeing it go up so we just need to just like hopefully you guys stick with us and any new suggestions we're always open to it so yeah just please keep watching yeah yeah no, that's brilliant thank you very much and we'll see you next monday reviewing the saudi arabia grand prix which we hope will be bloody fantastic we'll have loads of positive stuff to talk about and we won't be talking about the dramas of formula one have a good day and you take care guys